So now that we've looked at how we can actually manage the data we get back from the backend, let's look at how we actually present the data, because that's the step we're missing. We're still not presenting the data in the setup. So we're going to have a look at that now. Um, if I go into the directive that I'm using for the Angular setup that Michael Broomy, Broomley made for us, he says that if you want to do asynchronous setup, he's made a great example for us. And um, this is kind of the example. And I'm going to show you the required fields that we need to actually make the pagination work. And the cool thing is we have all the fields available. We just need to add them in our code. The first field that we need is the list of the syllabuses we want to present. So we need to present, uh, give in this directory, we need to give him a list of syllabuses. And for each syllabus, we're going to have a single syllabus in there that we can present some information about. The next thing that he requires is a filter that says items per page. We have that as well. We have one called syllabuses per page, and we're going to add that right here. The next thing that he requires is an amount of the total items available. And that's the syllabus total that I showed you before. Don't worry, I'll show you in the code in a second. But I need some kind of total syllabuses. I need to asynchronously, I need to get a result back that tells me that right now you have the 25 of the syllabuses, but there's actually a thousands available. So you need to pull out more in the next page. And the last one is kind of a default one, pagination current. That's just something I need to set. It's already available for me, so that's not a big problem. Then we're also going to set up the pagination control, and that's going to have a new function available. So whenever I click a new page number, I need to guess what? Call my get results page. Okay, so that's we're going to implement that one as well. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to implement this. And if you guys want to look at the code now, I've uploaded it in version 0.4.01. So now it's available for you if you want to pull it down and look at the code. So let's actually implement it here to just show you it step by step how I'm doing it. Going over to my code and notice that all the fields that I require are actually already available for me. I have the list of my syllabus available. I have the total syllabus available. I have the current page available that I'm on right now. And I also have how many I want per page available right now. So I just need to add those informations inside his setup that he's presenting uh, right here. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to add these to our deal pagination. So I'm going into my HTML page. And in here, I have my deal pagination. Let me just zoom out just a few clicks so that I can actually see all of the code. Uh, Lonky dory, there we go. So what did I need to specify? First, of course, the list of syllabuses that I have available right now. That's what we have right here. And then I need to specify how many items are there per page. I'm getting that information from syllabuses per page, which is hard-coded right now to 25. You can, of course, add any value there you want. Back to the syllabus HTML. The total items, that's how many syllabuses are actually available in the database with the current search result. And I also got that from my page result right here. So that's going to be populated automatically for me every time I do a search. Let's actually have a look right here in our um, result in Postman. You'll notice that I get a total back right here saying, in this search I did right here, I had 199 available results. And I only got one of them because I made a limit of one per page just to show you how that is actually pulled out. Also, the docs one is right here. That's actually the real list of syllabus that I'm pulling out. Let's get back to the code, the total and the docs. What else did I need? Well, I also needed to specify this current page that said pagination current. So I'm done. Now I'm actually presenting the data. But I also need to have the little bar in the bottom so that I can click next page, next page, next page. And I added that down here the pagination controls. And it all I need here is pretty much just um, an unpage change with a new page number. That's all I need to add in here. And uh, the new page number will then be sent in when I click, for instance, when I click page one here in our local host. Let me just go in here and show you. 
when I click, I want to go to page six, then the number six will be sent as new page. When I click page eight, eight will be sent to the controller so that I can actually sort on that. So let's check out the page changed function inside a controller. Do we have it? Do we have it? Where is it? There it is. It's very simple, right? Everything else is set up for me. So all I have to do is just call the function get results page and that will then again call the page service and everything is up and running. That's it. We're done. We have a full featured pagination setup in the front end using the beautiful back end pagination that we built earlier. Everything is running. We're almost at the end. I'm not even sure what else I want to show you guys, but maybe come with some good ideas and I will continue the video sessions. I have a few ideas for the next videos, but now I'm going to shut down Pagination um, and let's see what we figure out for the next videos. Have fun guys.